This show is brought to you by United Healthcare because we believe in the power of volunteering. Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching Project Volunteer. I'm your host, Randy Lanham, along with my co-host, Teresa Rowe. Thanks for watching part two of the Bluegrass Music Museum. So for part one, we feature the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, right? That's right, in Owensboro, Kentucky, and it is known as the Bluegrass Music Capital of the World. Guess what? Part two is going to be the We're... Bill Monroe Home Place and Museum because I was there. That's right, in Rosine, Kentucky, the birthplace of bluegrass. Yes. We thought it was very important to showcase bluegrass music museums. So we have Owensboro, Kentucky, bluegrass capital of the world. We have Rosine, Kentucky, birthplace of bluegrass. Stay tuned and watch Teresa actually do some work. Right. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Hello, this is Randy Lanham. And I'm Teresa Rowe, and we are your hosts for Project Volunteer. Have you ever wondered what nonprofit organizations do or about all their different volunteering opportunities? Or what about hearing testimonies from the recipients of their care? Join us on our journey as we walk in the shoes of a volunteer for a day and find out about some amazing organizations that are literally changing the world. And along the way, meet some true surprising heroes making a difference in the lives of others as we feature another Project Volunteer. Okay, hey Jody, you're the tourism director here, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So tell me what got you interested in being a tourism director, and then I want to hear about where we're at right now. Great. I'd love to tell you. Um, I actually moved to Kentucky about 33 years ago, and when I moved into this area, I saw that Rosine was really a diamond in the rough. So when the opportunity came up six years ago to be the tourism director, I jumped on it. I really wanted to be here to help promote Rosine, Bill Monroe, and bluegrass music and just the other things that are available in Ohio County. I bet you meet a lot of interesting people that come through the museum. We do. We really do. Um, we've only been open in the museum since 2018, and we've already logged 27 different states, and I think we have eight different countries. Oh, wow. So people from all over come for the love of bluegrass, for the mm -hmm. love of Bill, and just for the love of music in general. I know there's a lot of volunteer opportunities, and I am training today here to be a volunteer. So what are some opportunities? Okay. Well, in Rosine, we have it be the store sites Scenes and Sounds of Rosine, and it is a complete Rosine history of Bill Monroe being here. We have, we're in the museum, we have the museum, we have the um, Rosine Barn, live bluegrass music on Friday night. They, there's volunteers opportunities there. Of course, the grave site is here, no volunteering there, but it's <laughs> open as an it, attraction. Right? That's right. And then we have the home place. And the home place does tour guides, and uh, that is a lovely place to volunteer because you're going to meet all kinds of people when you volunteer there, too. Do you have an inspirational story you'd like to share? I do. One of my favorite stories is actually from the home place because you'll meet so many people there. And one day I was up and I was actually taking someone that wanted to just stop and do uh, getting some pictures. And the tour guide told me, she said, you need to meet this person. So I went over and I uh, was visiting with him. And then lo and behold, he said, this has been on my bucket list for a long time because my father was Cedric Rainwater. That was one of the original bluegrass boys that played with Bill. Oh, wow. And so he was about, uh, this fellow was in his 70s, and he was here, and he just, I mean, he just sat down and told me more and more stories. And it was, it was really a fun day to be able to meet him. What do you like most about being the tourism director and you're a volunteer also in this place mm -hmm. and recruiting people to volunteer. Well, that is something I like about uh, Rosine is that besides my position, everything and all the attractions, Uncle Penn's cabin, the uh, home place, the museum, the uh, barn, it's all run on volunteers. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I like that because it's a pride in the community and it's just promoting what you have. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a really nice feeling to know that people care that much. So today you're going to introduce me to someone that's going to train me, right? Yes. I'm <laughs> okay. going to introduce you to Connie. And Connie's going to show you what it's like to be uh, spend a day in the Bill Monroe Museum. 
Okay. Now, not every day is the same. Some days are really busy. Some days you just get to relax and enjoy, and that's a perfect day up at the home place when you have a couple visitors and you sit on the swing and take in the surroundings that Bill lived with. I can't but, wait till I go there. I haven't um, been there before. Oh, you'll love it. It's so peaceful and so quiet and, and nice, and people just, I have actually seen people kiss the ground when really? they have come. It's the Memphis of bluegrass. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. But I'd love to show you what we have here in the museum. Okay, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Connie, how long have you been a volunteer here? Uh, probably about six months, something okay. like that. And why? I mean, what prompted you to volunteer at the museum? It's an awesome museum. It is an awesome museum. And we have a lot of interesting people come in. I love people, love to talk to them. Uh, that's my specialty is customer service and just making people feel good and enjoy themselves while they're out. And that's real important. I mean, you want someone at that desk that's friendly and nice. I've been at places where they're not so nice. Well, Which you look like nice. you're going to be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try my best. So I'm a volunteer in training today, okay? okay? So please show me what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, well, we have a bell here, as you've heard earlier, mm -hmm. when we all the noise and stuff. But it's a good thing because if we're back there doing things or stuff like that, the bell comes on and we can come up here and greet our persons and make them feel welcome. First thing we'll do when they come in is that we'll turn all these lights on. We do keep them off because, you know, evidently we don't want to leave it on all day long and stuff like that because the museum has it in and out and mm -hmm. uh, we're really busy in the summer months and the fall we're not as busy but it's okay. still we do still have people come in the fall so okay. lights on right okay they're on okay now what? then you'll welcome your guest hello welcome to the museum <laughs> bill monroe museum yes and then you'll uh, ask them you know say this is a you know there is a fee of five dollars and so they pay you okay and then you'll let them direct them over here to the map and you'll say we do have a map here and just uh, look at it and see if you can find your place and mm -hmm. they'll do that and then i'll ask them to come over here and sign the register book okay and then of course here's the auditorium right over here we have a brief clip that shows a little bit about Bill and the museum. We'll have them go in there. You click it from here? Yes, usually I already have it on. I turn it on first thing in the morning when I come. Okay. And I've got a little light that turns on in there too. All right. That I turn on as I come in. Okay. But um, you'll just uh, have them go in there and you'll tell them, you'll say, this is a self touring museum. But if you need anything, let us know. We'll be more than glad to help you. And then I'll direct them to go out through the door and. They'll go and look, and if they, okay. sometimes I'll go out there and converse with them and stuff. And we do have a stage over there with instruments, mm -hmm. and I do. Do you play? Part, I don't, but there's instruments over there. They can get on there, and if they play, they can play a little bit, or they can pretend like they can. They can either, you know, take a picture, and their family can laugh with them or laugh at them when they show it. <laughs> So that's sort of what I do. I interact with them and just make them feel really welcome because that's what you're here for. They're out getting about and a lot of them are senior citizens. Mm -hmm. and, but it's, it's a good thing. I really enjoy it. I do. Well, I can tell. Do you have any inspirational story that you'd like to share? Well, we had a lady that came and she was a, her parent had died, just died, and then a few months before that, her other parent died. Mm -hmm. So she came in here and then she was looking for a place to stay. And she had left her credit card at the last hotel that she came to. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we got her fixed up at a local B&B. &B. Mm -hmm. She worked it out with, the, of course, the proprietor there. But she was really thankful and, you know, it's just a, it is a personal thing to help and encourage people because Absolutely. it's, uh, yeah, they come here and we make them feel like they're family and mm -hmm. we do. It's That's a blessing to serve others and, and get to talk to them and. It is. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Well, I hope I do a good job if we get some visitors in here. You may have to do the clicker thing though. Oh, I think I mean, you'll be I fine. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, uh, oh, 
Oh, Hello. Hi. hi, guys. Welcome hi. to the uh, Bill Monroe Museum. I'm, I'm in training, so um, okay. she is training me today. Yes. Am I doing okay? You're doing a great job, Percy. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes. There's a pin right here, and you could take and place it over there on the map okay. on where you're from. Yeah, correct. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And there is a fee of five dollars each. You got any money on you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's nice. <laughs> I'll have to use that one. Yeah. Here to take all my money. Okay, thank you. <laughs> here, Connie. Thank you. And we do have the cash box underneath here, okay? Oh, okay. That way we're gonna lay that in there. Okay. okay. And here's a sign-in sheet right here. Right. Let me move your pens. Should I have left it over there? Yes, you Maybe. should have. Okay, but well, that's I'm okay. That. that don't hurt anything. Okay. You're doing a fine job. <laughs> okay. And remember, we're going to direct them over here yes. to the... Yes. We do have a brief clip if you would like to see it. It does tell a little bit about the museum yes, and about do. Bill. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's right over here. Okay. You guys doing okay today? Good. Well, good. 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 Whoops, I think I turned it off, Connie. That's okay. Just push the button and turn it back on again. <laughs> I'm not doing very good as a volunteer. You're doing good. Okay. Okay, come on in here and we'll show them. You guys just have a seat. Okay. This is a self-touring museum, but if you need anything, please let us know, okay? okay. All right. Thank you, guys. We should say that maybe. Enjoy. Yeah, well, whatever you okay. want to say, whatever works for you. You know, it's not a cut and dried thing. That's very you just true. Just be who you are and be personable. And you're a very just, good trainer. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. I think you're going to do fine. Well, I appreciate it, and I appreciate all you do here. Well, appreciate you too coming in. Thank you. I hope we see you, and hope you can come and volunteer with us. Well, I will try. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, Faye, tell me um, how long you've been volunteering here. I've been volunteering here about four years. And why? Well, I, I moved here from Missouri. My husband passed away, and I moved here because I have a son at Fort Knox, and, and uh, he had me come down here. And we were always bluegrass fans for years and didn't dream I'd ever be close to Melbourne Rose Home. So when I got here, I came over and visited, and they were wanting volunteers, so here I am. And here you are. <laughs> so what do you like about it? Oh, I love to, to meet the people. There's so many interesting, nice people that you meet here from all over, everywhere, all over the world that are so fond of Bill Monroe and bluegrass music. And it's just really neat to talk to them. So why do you feel like it's important to volunteer? Oh, it gives me something to do, to get out of the house, to meet people. It's just uh, something I need to do. <laughs> so how many people from all over the states, would they, they tour here? And do you know how many come through here in a year's time? I really don't. I don't know, but uh, we have quite a few. And then, of course, we have the festival in the fall. A lot of people come for the festival. <laughs> okay, now you're going to give me a tour of the home, but I'm training to be a volunteer. I'm not going to take your place, believe me, <laughs> but I'm training <laughs> in the volunteers. shoes. You do need volunteers? Need volunteers. Okay, so um, someone's going to watch this and they're going to volunteer, Good. okay? Be great because we do need volunteers. Okay, so we're in the room, um, the very first room in the home. Yes, Why don't this you tell was, me about this? This was the, the living room and also the girl's bedroom. Bill was not born in this house. He was born here, but not in this house. This house was built by his father for his mother on their 25th wedding anniversary. And um, they lived in a, in a cabin that had this fireplace in it. And so the house, this is where he was born, but not in this building. This house has 10 doors and 17 windows. Um, we don't know why, but after living in a cabin, <laughs> I'm sure I'd want all the doors and windows I could get. So um, anyway, when they restored the house, uh, they used about 70 to 80% of the lumber, mostly the ceilings and the walls. They had to replace all the floors. Mm -hmm. The mantle on this side had to re be replaced. And on the other side, um, it's the original mantle. Yes. Okay, so the, how many doors? There are 10 doors and That's 17 windows. That's a lot of doors. Windows. Yes. How large is this home? Do you know the square footage no, of it? I sure don't. That's a lot of doors, no, though. I don't. 
<laughs> but I'm sure it was, I'm sure in his day, 1919, I'm sure mm -hmm. this was quite a show place. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure Beautiful here. people were glad to come and see it. Um, this, as I said, that was Melissa's rocking chair. That's the only thing here that's original is the rocking chair. It has been mm -hmm. recovered, but that's what she rocked her babies in. Bill was, I don't know if you know, Bill was born with a cross eye. His left, left eye oh. was cross. And... Brothers and sisters made fun of him. Our kids made fun of him. He was just pretty recluse because uh, he just couldn't take it, you know, sometimes. After a mm -hmm. while, he would go hide under the house or he'd go down in the woods, and that's kind of where he developed his music. And even his brothers and sisters were not uh, as nice as they should be. <laughs> he had two brothers that were playing Birch and Charter, and they were playing the fiddle and the guitar. And Bill wanted to play something, and they said, well, you can't play either one of them because we're playing them. So his mother got him a little mandolin, and then they made him take off two strings because uh, oh. he was too loud. <laughs> So, okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then his, you see over there in this picture, his mother was having grandchildren. Mm -hmm. She had a granddaughter when Bill was just four, and he couldn't understand because he was supposed to be the baby and get all the baby, and here she is adoring this little girl. <laughs> now, how many siblings did he have? He had five brothers and two sisters, and he was the youngest, of course. But <clears throat> um, Bill's mother died when he was 10 years old. And that he j hurt him, I think, the rest of his life. He just could not understand. And nobody explained to him what had happened. And before Belle's mother died, she was singing. She played the fiddle. She was Uncle Penn's sister. She played the fiddle, and she played the accordion, and she played the harmonica and sang all the time. And Bill said the worst thing was after she died, the house was quiet. Oh. You know. But he, he carried on her legacy. Yes, but uh, I'm sure that was hard. That, that yes. had been very And then challenging. just a few few months after um, she died, Bill had appendicitis. And they had to put him on a gurney because they couldn't take him in a wagon be so bumpy. And they walked him down the railroad tracks to Rosine, no doctor in, so they walked on to Horse Branch, still no doctor. So they put him on the train to Owensboro, and he had surgery. Uh, just barely made it. So oh, wow. He had a rough time. And then his mother was poorly, or his father was poorly until he was 16, and he passed away when he was 16. So um, just kind of a rough life he had. And he used music, I would say, yes, for he therapy. Yes, he did. He, he mm -hmm. was determined he was going to do something that he could do. Of course, his eyesight was bad. He had his eye fixed when he took a job in Chicago when he was mm -hmm. uh, almost 20 but all that time he had lived with that so that was uh, what a yeah. story we do have a light in the window we put that light there because bill said he came back one time thinking some cousins was living were living here bill was the last one of the the family to live mm -hmm. here some of them might have moved in and out but uh it was during depression times and people just kind of went where they could find a job so bill came back and he it was it was almost dusk when he got here and he had to walk in because the road was a mud road and he got up here and there was no light in the window. So he, that's when he composed that song about there being mom and dad are gone and there's no light in the window oh. on his way back mm -hmm. uh, to his vehicle. So, yes. So I'm going in the yeah, next room. Yeah, let's go in the next room. Okay, this is an this, interesting room, isn't it? This was his folks' bedroom. This is Buck and Melissa's bed and their chest and the guns belong to the Monroes. Um, up here on the, the uh, mantle, you see the five brothers. There was a sister here and a sister just before Bill. There were two sisters, and there were the five brothers and Bill, of course. And here's Uncle Pien. Uncle Pien worked for Bill's dad. Bill's dad was quite a uh, farmer or er, interpreter. He did a lot of things. Mm -hmm. He had a coal mine down here on the hill, and they did a lot of lumber work. The railroad was going through, and they made railroad ties and telephone poles, and they sold a lot of lumber for wagon making. And of course, people were beginning to build houses like this instead of log ones. And the, uh, the Louisville Bat Company, they sold a lot of lumber to the Louisville Bat Company for oh, bats. Oh, that's interesting. So, so they had quite a farm going here, so mm -hmm. Uncle Penn worked for him. And Uncle Penn would come here and play music, and of course that's where uh, Bill picked up a lot of Uncle Penn's. And then over on the other side you see a picture of Arnold Schultz. Arnold Schultz um, was a black man who lived in the area. He worked different jobs. He worked on the riverboat, different places. Anyway, he played blues, and Bill loved his blues. In fact, Bill got his first job 
uh, working with Arnold Schultz. Uh, he for a square dance. Uh, Arnold played the fiddle and Bill played the guitar. And that was, that was his first paying job. Oh, that's job. interesting. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay, this is Bill's bedroom. Bill always said he didn't have any windows in his room, but he had two two doors, as you can see. <laughs> I know. And, but his mother wanted him close, so this is where Bill's bedroom was. The original thing in here is this trunk, and it belonged to Bill's grandparents, who lived on this place before. Um, his folks did so it's it's quite old and this corner here is dedicated to the bluegrass boys there are 161 bluegrass boys wow and, uh, there's a list of them bill had two children james is the bottom picture there mm -hmm. uh, and that's his son and his daughter mm -hmm. melissa over here with him she died in her early 50s they think maybe she had leukemia and then he had one grandson jim bob and he's in the far picture over there so all these pictures in the home, were they donated um, by the family? Most of them, I think, probably mm -hmm. were, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just different events in his life. Yes. Very nice. Mm -hmm. All right. You want to go in the next room? Yes, we'll go in the next okay. room. I'm sure you've met a lot of interesting people, right? Yes, I have. Okay, so do you have any story that you want to share? Nice people. Well, I think probably the ones that impress me the most are people from Japan, young people, mm -hmm. who just really love Bill Monroe and just were so delighted to be here and so impressed to be here. Yes, they were. And then you have people who, who don't know anything about Bill Monroe that come and uh, you, of course, you have to give a lot of information to those. Then you have people come who probably know more about Bill Monroe than I do. And uh, it's a joy to have them here, too, because I learned from them. So there's just all kinds of people. And some of them play instruments, and they want to play their instrument on the porch. And mm -hmm. uh, So I always take a picture of them playing an instrument on the porch. And it's just but people from all over, and always nice people, just nice people. Well, I think you know a lot about Bill Monroe, <laughs> a whole lot more than me. And I appreciate you training me today. Mm -hmm. Although I'm going to have to go back and have a refresher course. But thank you so well, much for so training welcome. me today. Yes, and I hope you become a volunteer. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for watching Project Volunteer. Teresa, we had a good time volunteering at some bluegrass music museums, right? Absolutely. It was a lot of fun, and I learned a lot about bluegrass music. I mean, I really did. It's fascinating now to me. It is. And I love listening to it now, even you as you play. <laughs> Thanks. I'm glad I had such an influence. <laughs> <laughs> but but really we want really what but uh, we wanted to spotlight Owensboro, Kentucky, the bluegrass music capital of the world, mm -hmm. Rosine, Kentucky, the birthplace of bluegrass. We hope you not only go out and visit some of these places, but find a museum in your community and volunteer. But before we get done with the show, yes. we want to end with the song. We're talking about bluegrass music. We want to hear some music, right? So we're going to go down to Morgantown, Kentucky. Mr. Arnold Schultz was an African-American musician from Ohio County. He influenced a lot of people, especially mm -hmm. Bill Monroe when he was growing up in bluegrass music. So we're going to go down there and do a little bit of the Soldier's Joy as a tribute to Mr. Arnold Schultz. Thanks so much for watching the show. So we hope you enjoyed our feature of Bluegrass Music Museums. Bye. I had to say that, Randy. You you said that I could it's, do the It is on the script, I mean, so on. you're right. See Bye. Ya. <laughs> All right, how about we play a little bit of Soldier's Joy, boys? I know Arnold played a lot of square dances, and I'm sure he played this one at some of them square dances. Yeah. <laughs>
Teresa, the show is over now. Oh, yeah. We want to thank everybody for watching this show. Is this the real mic? Yes, but it's not on. Gotcha. <laughs> we want to encourage you to get out and you're volunteer. You're volunteer in your community. <laughs> volunteer in your community today, everybody. We've had a blast here today. Yeah, it's been so fun. This museum's awesome. All right, you ready to go? Y'all come back now, you hear? How's this? Good. Pretty good. <laughs> This show is brought to you by United Healthcare because we believe in the power of volunteering.